The world did not expect this, and neither did Elon Musk. From a nation often overlooked on world maps, a voice has emerged that could redefine Africa's future. In August 2025, Burkina Faso stunned the global stage with three inventions many believed could only come from Silicon Valley or Europe, a salt to freshwater system to save lives in drought, Africa's first electric military truck to break fuel dependency, and a smart agricultural drone to transform farming. This is not just engineering, it is a declaration. So the question is clear, are we witnessing Africa's Silicon Valley in the making? Burkina Faso is not the country the world expected to lead a technological revolution. Landlocked, with a GDP smaller than some American cities, it has long been painted as a place of scarcity. Yet in 2025, President Ibrahim Traoré flipped that narrative. He didn't unveil luxury products for export or gadgets for elite markets. He revealed tools born from desperation and turned into power. The first breakthrough, a salt-to freshwater system designed not in polished foreign labs, but in modest workshops and universities across Ouagadougou. For decades, Western NGOs told Africa that clean water would always depend on aid. Yet here stood proof that Africa could engineer its own survival. The second, Africa's first electric military truck. Built for the Sahel's harsh terrain, it carried a message beyond its mechanics, sovereignty. An army free from imported fuel is an army harder to control. In a region where foreign powers have long dictated logistics, this was nothing less than rebellion on wheels. And then, the agricultural drone. A small machine with massive impact, capable of planting seeds, reading soil health, and guiding farmers toward record harvests. For millions who face hunger every year, it was not just innovation, it was hope in the sky. Individually, each invention is remarkable. Together, they form a declaration. They whisper a message across Africa, the time of dependency is over. But such a message is not without danger. Because when a small nation dares to prove that survival does not need foreign permission, the world begins to take notice, and not always with applause. The announcement rippled through Africa like a shockwave. Across Ouagadougou, crowds filled the streets, waving flags and chanting that a new dawn had arrived. In villages, elders spoke of independence not just as a dream but as a possibility, something they could now taste in the water and see in the machines. For once, Africa was not borrowing survival it was inventing it. But beyond Burkina Faso's borders, the reaction was not so celebratory. In Western capitals, headlines framed the breakthroughs with cautious skepticism. Too ambitious, some declared. Others asked whether such inventions could truly be homegrown. The tone was clear, this was not applause, it was doubt. And beneath that doubt lay something sharper, fear. The Saltu freshwater system struck a nerve first. For decades, Western NGOs had made billions running aid projects in drought-stricken regions. If Africa could desalinate water cheaply and at scale, what role would those organizations play? The business of dependency was at risk. Aid was not just charity, it was power, a way to keep nations tethered. Burkina Faso's solution threatened to cut that cord. The electric military truck carried even greater symbolism. In the Sahel, armies have long relied on imported fuel, often from the very nations that stationed troops or pushed contracts in the region. A vehicle that moved without diesel meant a military no longer chained to external supply lines. To the Burkinabi, it was an engineering miracle. To foreign powers, it was a warning, control is slipping. And then came the drone. At first glance, just another agricultural tool. But its promise was staggering. Monitoring soil, predicting rainfall, automating planting. With it, Burkina Faso hinted at solving food insecurity on its own terms. Imagine an Africa where farmers fed themselves without the assistance of foreign seed monopolies. Four corporations invested in Africa's dependency, this was dangerous territory. Whispers began to spread. Analysts on global news networks questioned whether Burkina Faso could responsibly manage such advancements. Critics hinted at instability, corruption, or lack of capacity. Yet behind the polite language lurked an old narrative that African nations could not be trusted to innovate without supervision. It was the same prejudice dressed in new clothes. Inside Burkina Faso, though, hope and anxiety collided. Citizens celebrated, yet many feared the weight of history. Nations that dared to step beyond the shadow of dependency had often been punished, through sanctions, propaganda, or worse. 
Troy's government faced a dangerous question. Would the world allow this independence to grow, or would it be strangled before it bloomed? The inventions were no longer just tools. They had become symbols of defiance. Every drop of fresh water, every silent turn of an electric engine, every seed planted by a drone was a declaration that Africa could write its own future. And declarations like that rarely go unchallenged. The weeks following the unveiling were anything but calm. What began as applause inside Burkina Faso quickly transformed into a storm outside its borders. International media outlets ran endless debates, each questioning how a small, landlocked nation had achieved what global giants had failed to deliver. Some framed it as a miracle. Others called it impossible. And beneath those polished headlines was a darker undercurrent, accusations that this technology must have been stolen or imported. The suggestion was clear. Africa could not possibly be the author of its own innovation. Pressure mounted fast. Reports emerged that major corporations in Europe had quietly begun lobbying against Burkina Faso's freshwater system, calling it unverified and potentially dangerous. Rumors spread that sanctions could follow if the technology threatened established markets. Aid agencies, once presenting themselves as saviors, now shifted the narrative, warning that Burkina Faso's unproven methods might destabilize the region. But the real flashpoint came with the electric military truck. Footage of it rolling through the streets of Ouagadougou, silent, massive, unstoppable, went viral across Africa. Soldiers in neighboring countries reportedly asked their governments why they were still dependent on expensive foreign fuel. The truck had become more than a vehicle. It was a symbol of military freedom. And symbols are powerful enough to shake empires. Behind closed doors, foreign diplomats demanded clarity from Troyes government. Intelligence whispers claimed that outside forces were considering ways to suppress Burkina Faso's momentum, whether through economic isolation, internal destabilization, or more covert means. For a nation still rebuilding from years of instability, this was no small threat. Inside the country, tension hung heavy in the air. Citizens celebrated the innovations as victories, but fear seeped into the conversations. They knew the history, Nations that dared to challenge global hierarchies often paid a steep price. The inventions had brought pride, but also a dangerous spotlight. And in that spotlight, Burkina Faso stood alone, daring the world to challenge its right to define its own future. As the dust settled, one truth became undeniable. Burkina Faso had forced the world to look at Africa differently. Whether praised as a miracle or dismissed as a threat, the inventions could not be ignored. The Saltu freshwater system continued to bring relief to parched villages, where mothers no longer walked miles for water and children could drink without fear. The electric military truck, even in limited numbers, stood as a quiet warning that Africa's armies could one day move without permission from foreign fuel suppliers. And the drone, buzzing gently over farmland, carried with it the promise that hunger was not destiny but a solvable problem. For the people of Burkina Faso, these were not abstract concepts. They were daily reminders that innovation could be African, that survival did not have to be outsourced, and that dignity could be engineered as surely as machines. Pride swelled in the streets, even as whispers of danger persisted. Citizens knew the risks, but they also knew history rarely rewards silence. Outside, the reactions remained divided. Some nations saw opportunity and sought partnerships. Others, more threatened, sharpened their language, warning of instability and irresponsibility. The same old narrative echoed, dressed in the language of caution but rooted in disbelief that Africa could lead without guidance. And yet, the story was bigger than Burkina Faso. Across the continent, young inventors, students, and dreamers looked at these breakthroughs and saw possibility. If one small nation could rise, what could happen if Africa's potential were unleashed without chains? This is the power of symbols. A truck, a drone, a water system, together they became more than machines. They became a challenge to the world order. They asked a question no headline could silence. What happens when Africa stops asking permission? Because if survival, sovereignty, and innovation are no longer gifts handed down, but rights claimed from within, then the future of power itself may be rewritten. And perhaps one day soon, the world will no longer speak of Africa as emerging, but as leading. If this story made you pause and think about the future of Africa, then you already know these inventions are more than machines, they're a statement of independence. But what do you think? Will the world embrace Africa's rise, or try to hold it back? 
Share your thoughts in the comments. I read every one of them. And if you want more untold stories like this, make sure to like, subscribe, and stay with us for what comes next.